from the Los Angeles Times. I'm Mark Olson. Welcome to this Indie Focus virtual screening series event. Uh, we're very excited today to be featuring the film Jockey, directed by Clint Bentley, co-written with Greg Quidar. And the film tells the story of an aging jockey who has hopes of winning one last title, who finds that dream complicated by both his own health issues and injuries, and also the arrival of a young jockey who claims to be his son. And when the film premiered earlier this year at the Sundance Film Festival, it won a special grand jury prize for lead actor for Clifton Collins Jr. And so we're quite pleased today to be joined by Clifton Collins Jr., actress Molly Parker, director, co-writer, and producer Clint Bentley, and co-writer and producer Greg Quidon. Thanks to all of you for, for joining us today. We're very excited to have you. Thanks. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. For and uh, here. Clifton, I'll, I'll start with a, a question for you. You know, you're known as a as a supporting actor in, in for example, the, your role in the new Guillermo del Toro film, Nightmare Alley. And this is kind of a rare lead role for you. What did it mean to you to have, you know, a part like this, to get a, a lead role in a, in a film like Jockey? I mean, in hindsight, it's amazing. <clears throat> but at the, at the time, um, it was just me uh, jumping in to make a movie with my friends that I've, I've worked <laughs> with before. So it's like, you know, as the, um, as the stakes got higher <clears throat> and you realize it's becoming more and more of an indie, um, and it's going to take more of my, my personal involvement in addition to just uh, the acting. Um, you, you just kind of focused on the goal, really. Um, so all this extra stuff that's happened is just a, a, an enormous, beautiful blessing. Uh, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm completely indebted to Greg and Clint for writing this to me for me. But, um, you know, initially, it's just like I'm, I'm jumping in every time they come and like, oh, this is happening now and this is happening. I'm like, I'm already committed, so it doesn't matter. Let's just go. <laughs> and then, Molly, your role of Ruth, she's a, a trainer at the track. She's not a wife or a girlfriend. She's not any kind of a love interest. Like, she really has her own story, you know, story, and mm -hmm. she's very much a complete person. What does it mean to you to get a, a, a offered a part like this? Like, is, there, is it rare for you to be offered a role quite like Ruth? Um... I mean, Ruth is Ruth is very much, yeah, her own woman. But I guess what was, you know, what was interesting to me when these guys sort of came to me um, was really the whole package. I mean, more than just the character. It was that Clifton was already, um, you know, attached to it. I've been a fan of his forever and was excited to see him take something like that on. And I, yeah, more than anything, I just felt that, these filmmakers and the conversations we had from the images they sent me and um, they were the real deal, you know? And throughout the filming of it, you know, we kind of, she existed, but then we sort of created her together. Because Clint, Greg, the two of you, you wrote these parts specifically with Clifton and Molly in mind. What is it about these two performers that spoke to you? Like, what, what were you sort of aiming for in, in what you wanted from them? Well, we knew Clifton from, from our, our first film, uh, Transpecos, which Greg directed. And on that one, he only came out and only shot with us for a week. Uh, but we just saw how much potential he had as an actor and how much, to your first question, that he you know, wasn't being used uh, to everything that he could do. And then after that, we got to know him as a person. And so it really just came from, let's give Clifton a role that he can uh, really do everything that we know that he can do and show people that. Um, and then Molly just was always someone we looked up to and admired as an actor because she always seemed to find characters who they could go one way or the other uh, and, and in a lesser actor's hands, might have been a, a cliched version of a character, but she always found such rich depth um, and, and made them fully human and played with, with these different aspects of them and these dichotomies of these characters. And, and that felt like what we wanted Ruth to be. Um, and she just did it beautifully. And Greg, did you want to add anything? Yeah, you know, uh, speaking about Clifton, as, as Clint said, you know, this all was born out of out of friendship and spending so much time between films where 
you know, I mean, we, 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 like so many people have, have loved, uh, roles that he's done is, you know, any movie he's in, uh, he's, he's the most important thing happening in any scene that he's in. But in our friendship, uh, with Cliff, you know, started to get access to, you know, so many other shades, shades of him that we haven't seen in a lot of roles. Like he's got so much warmth as a human. There's a, there's a deep soulfulness to him. And there's also a lot, a, a deep sadness to him. And both of those things dancing with each other became like the basis of like how to build this role. And with Molly, um, it's an energy thing. Like there's this tremendous presence, um, really, especially it, it's something we had intuition about, but then when we started shooting with her, it became even more apparent. It just like, it's this energy that lifts everything around you. It lifts all the actors, it lifts all the crew. Um, I, I, I can see Clinton Clifton nodding because it's, it's so true. And then there's also secrets, secrets upon secrets upon secrets going on um, behind her eyes that really is so magnetic and it's like a gravitational pull that, that brings audiences and uh, storytellers like us closer to want to find more, to want to dig more, to want to write more for her. Because Clifton, I'm always so interested when I hear that like a part has been written with an actor in mind. I mean, I, I don't know how much you were talking to Clinton Gregg as they were working on this and you sort of knew what was coming, but like what what were your f sort of first impressions when they when they finally you know gave you the script and presented you with the with the role? Um, it, it's a it's a process. Uh, you know, it's independent film, and and I, I knew that they were uh, building it. Um, and we were constantly checking in with one another, um, reading every draft they would send me. Um, and that, that allows me to, to interpret a, a process that's going on with them, creatively speaking. So um, it was very much collaborative. Uh, so so the, I'm not one to, uh, you, when one's in the process, you can't, the, the process ceases to exist once you begin to judge it. So you, it has to be free and flowing and non-judgmental non to keep it completely, truly, organically collaborative. So um, th there weren't a whole lot of, uh, th the input I had was all creative. And Molly, for you, when they first came to you with the, this project and you find out that they've written this like with you in mind, what are your like first impressions? Like, what do you, what do you think when someone comes and tells you that? It's 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 happened a few very few a few times in my <laughs> career, and I it's always sort of strange because you wonder like, oh, is that is that how they see me? Or there's something about you know Sorry, when, you, when you're starting out and you audition for roles, and you get the part, you kind of know you got it based on a set of choices or or, or something, or you think that anyway. And um, so this it's it's a different it's a different thing. But these guys early on sent me a, a bunch of images and um, a, a just different things. Like th there was some poetry in there, and there was I, I have this. There was this photograph of a woman with these really big glasses, like hugging this cougar, like it was her lover or something. And just sort of there were, you know. And then they had shot some. Um, they had shot some stuff at the track and it was all so cinematic and visually exciting and yeah I felt I I just was ex I was excited from from the very beginning to work with these guys and it's I, I don't it's hard to talk about this film in a way because it's so rare to have this kind of experience with this kind of collaboration that really results in something that you can be so proud of, you know, and with these filmmakers, but also with Clifton. I mean, his ability to be, you know, he, he can be in it all the time. I mean, really in it. And at the same time, have a real understanding of story and, and he's a smart actor, you know, and, but, but, um, so we had so much fun. It was just a pleasure. Because Clint, Greg, apart from Clifton and Molly and Mo Moses Arias, 
there weren't very many like actors in the production. I mean, you were really relying a lot on people who sort of like exi actually exist in this world you would meet at the at the tracks. How can you talk a little bit about that style of working? Like, what is it that you like about mixing sort of, you know, quote, real actors in with non-professionals from the world? And what do you think that you get from that process? It it was really something from the beginning that was a, it was a really hard uh, puzzle to solve because on the one hand, we were, we were writing the script and, and trying to get all of these things across about horse racing that, um, that I wanted to get across from having come from that world. And, but at the same time, you don't want it to feel false. And so there was also an impulse of, why don't we make a documentary? Um, but, but you want to find a film that sits right in between and the other part of it is uh, really not wanting it to feel like one of those movies where you've got actors and they're doing their scenes and then you have uh, the scenes where they interact with first time actors and it just feels like these two worlds colliding rather than something new coming out of it. And, uh, and so, yeah, there was, some, th there was a lot to figure out, but the amazing thing was was having Clifton and Molly and and Moises as well, who could just they they could do this brilliant thing that that I think is so it seems so effortless on screen, but it's actually incredibly difficult what they did of being able to command these scenes together and do these beautiful, really heavily scripted scenes, and then in the next scene step in with somebody who's just a trainer uh, or or a jockey at the track who's never been in front of the camera before and not only help guide them through the scene, um, but also do something really resonant and stay in the moment, not overthink it, and also not overpower this, this first time actor and, and really let them let themselves disappear into the scene uh, as a character. And it was just, it was a dream as a first time director. I, I don't know that I really fully understand how lucky I was to have these two actors. <laughs> Greg, is this similar to how how you worked on Transpecos? Like, like, do you feel that you and Clint kind of have this sort of like semi-documentary style that you're exploring? Well, the, there's many similarities, um, and then there's things that we went even more aggressively and pushed the boundaries of with Jockey. But I'd say the the biggest common ground is that is how influenced we are by setting. Um, we 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 believe it is just as primary a character as our lead actors and that, you know, we build our stories from the dirt up. We want to pull a curtain behind a world and come in there and really understand the place first. And then, and then the people and who they are and, and all of their beauty and contradictions and warts. And then the sort of story comes from there. And, you know, uh, with Turf Paradise, once we discovered this place, there were so many um, layers underneath it and things that we were discovering, um, but also that our that our actors were discovering. And and the reason I think a lot of that could happen and where we pushed the boundaries even further is, you know, this was a live working racetrack. Um, we were coming into people's day job and profession. Um, and we did that via a 10 person crew. Um, and, and, and that was by design so that we wouldn't have this sort of huge footprint that 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 really we could almost fold into this community on the backside and, and and walk through their world alongside them. And I think that enabled the vulnerability that we were able to get from these um, from these people who supported Clifton, uh, Molly and Moises. And, and then our actors also. Um, sort of relish in the same opportunity. Uh, you know, Molly was on the backside working with uh, one of the only female trainers on the track. And every morning she was getting up and working the barns and Clifton, Clifton and Moises were with the jockeys every day. And they're bringing all that back to us. And we're uncovering new things about the story and the script um, that Clint and I are able to fuse into the writing. So it really, it, you know, when Molly talks about being a collaborative effort, it truly was, we were all in a way, writing the script further as we were making the film together. Because Molly, what was it like for you stepping into that world? Did you enjoy kind of interacting with some of the sort of, you know, the actual people from this world? Yeah, I mean, the, it, the backside of the track is just a, 
it's a community that I've never experienced. And I feel like we haven't really seen in film. I haven't seen it before. And, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's an amazing place, you know, it's full of characters and it has this kind of carny vibe to it. And the stakes are really high. Um, but it's also, you know, this is these people's lives and there's no days off. You get up every morning at 4 a.m. and feed the horses. And, you know, it's it, it was really, really uh, a joy. And... Um, and it's it's also that's that's a real rarity. Like to be able to sort of do your research in the place where you're shooting, around the people you're going to be doing it with. You know, it just blurs those lines in a way that that made it um, easier. Because Clifton, can you talk a little bit about the sort of stripped down style of the production? I, I've heard you talk about the fact that you you would sometimes help move equipment. Yeah, I love moving equipment. I, I've moved <laughs> scissor lifts, does, I've moved He jetty. does that on big movies too. <laughs> uh, if the, if uh, yeah, the union reps don't see me, I'll definitely uh, move stuff on a big film. <laughs> but on, on indies, uh, you know, it, it's such a, a family effort, you know, meaning the entire crew, it's, uh, it's far more, it allows for an intimacy that is, is very difficult to obtain on, on bigger budgeted films. So um, it's very much a, a family endeavor. So how could I not help my family? <laughs> if I got to carry gear, I'm going to carry gear. <laughs> but what did sort of like entering that world, you know, uh, at the track, what did it do for you and your, your performance and interacting with sort of non-professionals and real people from that world? Uh, it, it, it did everything. <clears throat> um, I, I think people that know how I work, I, I, I love to... Uh, I love to hang out with my techs, my tech advisors. I love to, if I have an opportunity to embed in the actual world that I'm representing, that's the biggest, that's the biggest get possible. Cause then you just try to uh, acclimate to your environment. You know, the actor stuff aside, yes, we're, we're making a movie, but my main goal is to be accepted first um, by the people that I'm representing. So it's, it's a, it's a um, invaluable tool um, not to mention uh, uh, amazing individuals with, with ginormous hearts, and they're very, very giving and welcoming. And um, it's very humbling to be a to be to be part of that world, and and also traumatic to leave it. It's very traumatic to leave because you, you get you get so attached. And Clint, your your father, in fact, was <clears throat> excuse me. Your father, in fact, was a, a jockey, and I, I'm curious what it's kind of meant to you to be bringing this world to, to the screen, to like, to tell this story. Yeah. My dad was a jockey. Um, and I grew up in this world behind the barns. Uh, and it, it's turned out beautifully. And, and it, there was, there was something that I hoped would come across with the movie. Um, and it was just that feeling of just standing on the backside, uh, of the track by the barns kind of when the sun's coming up watching the work starting and and uh this weird family this weird carny family uh coming together and um and yeah i i couldn't be more thankful for how it turned out and and everything from the research that the actors did to carrying gear and and our crew who worked so hard i just uh, so so many things had to click into place uh, for it to uh, for it to turn out this way. And I'm, I'm very thankful that they did. Because, Greg, one of the things I think is really remarkable about the storytelling in the movie is the two of you just have such patience that you're not, like, forcing plot or story. You really are allowing the world and these characters to sort of take control. Is, is that hard to... <clears throat> excuse me. Is that hard to hold on to, like, to, to sort of not force the plot and force story when you're when you're taking part in a world like this mm. well i i i honestly take a lot of um i have to give i have to give most of the credit to clint as a as a filmmaker and how he's developing as an artist um it was something as a as a as a fellow director you know we're both on set 
And one of the gifts of that is, is, you know, we're there as, as almost as creative support, creative advisor, but also your most directors kind of live on an Island and you don't get to see other people's process. And so to then be beside Clint and watching him do this work, one of the things that I, I found that he understood at such an innate level was to let this movie breathe. And, uh, and, and oftentimes it would just be in, in finding these quite kind of moments of stillness to just let the camera observe these actors and these people in a moment. And, you know, you're not, I, I wasn't entirely clear, like how, how, how we would sort of employ it throughout the cut of the movie. Um, but there was something sort of felt in, in it once we were, when we were capturing it and then just kind of seeing it sort of laced throughout the edit um it, it established that rhythm that uh that i think is so hard to get right um and and, and most like american filmmaking today is is sort of it is is sort of trying to tight like be as tight and 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 have this kind of relentlessness to it um that that i think this cinema experience um is so refreshing in its restraint and can you talk about a little, that a little bit as well, Clint? Like, what is it? Did you feel that way, that you were, there's a certain restraint and patience in the storytelling? Yes, it, it uh, I mean, a lot of it, you, you want to say, like, everything was planned out and, and everything was storyboarded <laughs> from the beginning. And it's, it's not always that way. Um, you a lot of times just listen to the movie that's that's unfolding in front of you and 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 hope that you can be smart enough to just step back and and um and let it unfold uh it, but from the beginning it was something that we we had the good fortune of not thinking we, we thought that no one would see this movie uh we were just making this little movie at um at out at a track in phoenix and and maybe someone would would hopefully pick it up and it would see some festivals but because of that, it, it gave a great amount of freedom that um, I wanted it to feel like uh, it, it, an old Kuristami movie or, or like a movie that you found from Italy in the 60s or something like that, that that's something that, that you didn't know who the actors were or who the, who the real people were and, and just something you could like kind of slip down into for an hour and a half um, and then on the other side be, be opened up emotionally. And, um, you know, it... Uh, it we really were helped by our actors in this too, where um, even in the middle of shooting, I got a little nervous because it was feeling too uh, too slow at times. And and mm -hmm. and Greg and I talked, and and he felt the same way. And so we wrote a scene that was like very aggressive, and it was between Molly and Clifton, uh, between their characters. And then we showed it to them, and we're like, "Hey, you know, we're ready to shoot this tomorrow. What do you think?" And they read it, and they're like okay, it's, it's, it's all right. Like, we'll do this if you want to do it. But what you had was, was better and it was more interesting. And, and so maybe we try that. And then it was just a, it was just the, the perfect moment of just listen to your actors. They, they know, uh, they know what they're doing on, on an intrinsic level too. And, and they saved that scene. Clifton, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, for, did you feel like particularly empowered in this process to be able to, to talk in that way to them to sort of like ax a, a scene? I don't know if empowered's the word um, because it was very much a, an organic a collaboration. So in, in that respect, it, it's an even a playing field. Um, we each relied on each other's strengths. So, uh, you know, it's fortunate to be working with collaborators that understand everybody's strengths and strong points and weak points. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to constantly listen um, there's so much to learn, so uh, it's fun. I, I don't know about uh, in, empowering. It, it feels good to to have that freedom, um, and, and I think that's the key: is is being free to create and not being inhibited um, by rules and regulations or any or, or egos. We kept our egos outside. I think that was really important. And there's a lot. Molly, of do you remember fear. that moment? I, I I do remember that. I remember that evening and. And a number of other evenings because we we all were you know staying in a little hotel right by the track and we would get together in the evenings and go through what we were going to do the next day. But there's a there. It's 
there, there was a, there is a, there was a lack of fear, you know, and it's funny to hear Clint say like, well, we didn't think anyone would see it. So, <laughs> the, so much of filmmaking ends up being about fear, I find, you know, because it costs so much money to make films. And so, you know, the pressure on filmmakers is enormous to get the things shot in, in the day and to have it be the anxiety that exists then in that creative process is always sort of something I'm trying to like get past in order to just be in, in the scene. And, um, you know, and, and, and it sounds like they, they did have some nervousness, but this openness, this ability and this trust to go, okay, well, I mean, that, that to me is just an incredibly, um, rare and talented thing to be able to do, to have that confidence, um, to not be afraid, to not be to creating out of a place of fear. And Clifton, I, I have to ask the last moments of the movie, this, <clears throat> this conversation is intended to be seen for people who've like already seen the, the movie. So I hope you don't kind of worry about spoilers or anything like that, but I, I, that last moment of the movie, you know, you've just I run die. a race. <laughs> you, you know, you, <laughs> you've just run a race you get off the horse and the camera just stays with you as you're kind of just walking mm. away and so many emotions are going through your face it's a, just an astonishing moment of screen acting and can you talk a little bit about that like what like in a moment like that kind of what's going through your head what do you think is happening for the character there, like what, what is it like shooting a, a moment like that last moment in the movie? Um, <clears throat> uh, it's cathartic for one, but uh, to get the shot done, I think I started with asking Clint, one, how far was Adolfo gonna attract with me? And two, um, what would he like to see in this scene? And based off of what he wanted to see on the scene was a big indicator of where Jackson was going through, what he was going through emotionally. So um, I just articulated loosely in my own bullet points to Clint, um, okay, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z, this, that. When I turn the corner, this is gonna happen. I'm gonna go through some things. And um, we just let her rip. I think we did two or three shots and that's what, that's what you got in the film. <laughs> but it's an array of emotions. And it, it, at this point, we were lucky enough also to uh, shoot uh, mostly in sequence. So it allows the, the characters and the actors to grow with one another. Um, and and uh, it allows me um, the ability to, to, to get lost even deeper into Jackson's life. So it's, um, you know, you're, you're feeling real things, so. Hey, Clint, can you add, talk a little, please. Oh, I, I just want to add something real quick, Mark, because I, I think it's, it's not just that shot, it's the culmination of such a finely measured performance about mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean to hide pain, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. and and that that moment and what what gets unveiled is ultimately an, an unburdening and, a, and and revealing to anyone and not being scared to hide anymore. And you see it, you know, just like in how he's sort of pulling off his silks and how the limp starts to emerge again, and how it's and and, and it's okay to show um the love he has for this kid and the love he has for Ruth and the sport and the ability to to walk away but that that really is is what emerges um I think in that moment uh, and so it's it's it pays off in the way that it does one is sort of beautifully executed and orchestrated by everybody involved but but it's also because all the early work uh, in that performance to to build to that moment Clint, can you talk a little bit about that that final moment? Yeah, no, I think that Greg said it beautifully. Um, it was something that was really, I think this was like our sixth ending that we wrote for the movie. Uh, we had an ending in the script and then everyone kind of knew it was off, but it was close. And so we kept trying to find the right ending. Um, and, uh, you know, Adolfo had an idea for an ending. I think Clifton had an idea for an ending, our production designer, <laughs> Guy Marini. Everyone's just kind of like, well, what if we did this? What if we did that? And um, and then Greg lit on this idea of just like, just follow him out. 
and and it was a it was a beautiful mo- it was a beautiful light bulb um and then so we get to the day and and uh and we had talked with Clifton and I had talked about what what that would be like and how it would be orchestrated and then and then on the day you know we've had the 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 benefit of shooting most of the shoot by then and after we orchestrate the horses and everything I step over to Clifton to say you know he, to give him some direction as directors should but he was just like I got it he knew exactly what to do <laughs> like he knew everything that every, everything that was going to come across in in those few minutes and and yeah it's it, he, he just he just nailed it but it was this it's it's a hard movie the last thing I'll say is just like it's a very hard line to walk with the, with the ending of this movie because it's something, and this is why it took so many times to figure out what the ending would be because you've got your, your, uh, the kid who's supposed to be his son ends up not being his son. He doesn't win the race. He doesn't go over and have a big hug with Ruth. Um, uh, it, it just, all of these things that you expect as an audience don't happen. And so how do you still have it feel like a, not a downer? Um, but, but, but even beyond that, just a, a cathartic experience um, and just letting uh, Clifton expose all of that on his face. And, and that was the way to go. Well, that's a, a wonderful place to wrap up this conversation ab- about the movie uh, from jockey Clint Bentley, Clifton Collins Jr., Molly Parker, and Greg Quidar. Thanks to all of you and congratulations again on the movie. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Love you guys. Good to see you again. It's always good to see you. Bye, guys.